Welcome again to Naked Truth, where we let truth bear for all to see from the Bible itself, from the scriptures. Um, we are continuing today on our series, Why Jesus Will Not Be a Christian If You Were to Be Alive. In today's episode, Jesus will not be a Christian because Jesus was not for Gentiles. Jesus' ministry wasn't for Gentiles, and Christianity, meanwhile, is a Gentile religion. John 1, 10 to 12. A very nice passage, very sweet. It goes like this. Jesus was in the world he was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet, to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> what if I told you that this is not true? <laughs> what if I told you that the ministry of Jesus was not for non-Jews at all? That it was supposed to be only for the Jews? And what if I told you that Christianity is actually a Gentile pagan religion? What would you say? Well, the first reason today why Jesus, um, why the ministry of Jesus was not for Gentiles or non-Jews, and why, why he would not be a Christian is because... Jesus, the Bible tells us, was supposed to be the king of the Jews, <laughs> the king of Judah. He was supposed to inherit the throne of King David, and he was supposed to rule over Judah or the Jews forever. He wasn't supposed to rule the world. Luke, te Luke 1, 30 to 33. Luke 1, 30 to 33. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. Mary is the mother of Jesus. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. And you are to call him Jesus. He will be great. And will be called the Son of the Most High. Now listen to this. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David and he will rule Jacob's descendants. Not the world, not Africa, but Jacob's descendants, the Jews, forever. Matthew 2, 5-6 When Herod asked the chief priest and the scribes where the Messiah would be born, they answered. Now this was when the... Um, the three wise men from the east were coming to find the baby Jesus. So apparently, um, Herod was um, worried about it. So he called the scribes and the men of the law and asked them, where was the Messiah supposed to come from? And they answered to him, in Bethlehem in Judea, the prophets the prophet wrote about this Bethlehem in the land of Judah 
You are by no means least among the leaders of Judah. A leader will come from you. He will shepherd my people, Israel. He will shepherd the people of Israel. A leader, a Messiah, a Savior will come from Bethlehem in Judah and he will lead, he will shepherd the people of Judah in Israel. And this is why the Gospels call him the son of David. Yeah, some people in the Gospels call him the son of David. And that is why they refer to him as well as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Lion of the tribe of Judah not lion of the world. <laughs> Revelation 5, verse 2 and verse 5. Revelation, this is John, according to the Bible, according to tradition. Uh, John was seeing a vision in the Revelation. So he said, I saw a mighty angel proclaiming a loud voice. Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and the seven seas. Jesus was supposed to be the lion of the tribe of Judah, not the lion of the tribe of anywhere else. And note as well that the dynasty of David, the kingship of David, the house of David extended only in Judah. Not even the entirety of the kingdom of Israel. As a matter of fact, only two out of the 12 tribes of Judah, uh, of Israel, belonged to the dynasty of David, the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin. The other 10 are Samaritans that are not part of the dynasty of David. So Jesus was supposed to be a ruler, an inheritor of the throne of David and a ruler over the tribe of Judah, i.e. the Jews. Remember it is from Judah that Judaism and Jew came from. Secondly, Jesus' ministry according to the Gospels was designed for his people the Jews. It is not me saying it, it is what the Bible says. I'm reporting. <laughs> the ministry of Jesus was only for the Jews. And because of this, Jesus, in the Gospels, did not preach to non Jews. His ministry was limited to Galilee, in the northern kingdom of Israel, where he was, where he grew up allegedly, and in the southern kingdom of Judah, or in Judea. Uh, Galilee, uh, all those areas in Judah. He never preached outside Israel. Not only that, Jesus, according to the Gospels, gave explicit instructions to his disciples not to preach to non-Jews. Matthew 10, 5-7 Matthew 10, 5-7 These twelve disciples Jesus sent out with the following instructions. So he was giving instructions to his disciples. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter 
any town of the Samaritans. The Samaritans are in the northern kingdom of Israel, the ten tribes of uh, northern Israel. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those that have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you received, freely you should give. Do not go to the towns of the Gentiles or the towns of the Samaritans. Stay only amongst your people, the Jews. And the disciples, according to the Gospels, maintained this attitude and did not go to preach to anyone outside Israel, outside Judea. And we shall discuss this further in due course. And when Apostle Paul took over and began to spread uh, the, the Gospel, to non-Jews, it was Apostle Paul, not the disciples of Jesus, who took the gospel outside Israel. And to make this matter clear, if you remember the case or the episode about a Canaanite woman that came to Jesus in Matthew 15, 22 to 28, this woman came from the vicinity of Tyre and Sidon, a Canaanite woman, a non-Jew, a non-Israelite. He came to Jesus, according to the Gospels, crying, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is possessed by demons and she's suffering. Please come and help me. He said, Jesus did not say anything to her. And the disciples said, send this woman away, for she keeps disturbing us. And Jesus said, I was sent only to the lost ship of Israel. So this Canaanite woman, I'm not for you. I was sent only to the lost ship of Israel. But the woman did not give up. He, she came and knelt down before Jesus and said, Please, Lord, help me. Please help me. And then Jesus said to her, It is not right to take the children's food and give it to dogs. It is not right to take what belongs to my people, the Jews, and give to you a stranger and give to you a Gentile, a dog. It's not right. But the woman refused to, to go. She said, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's, master's table. Because of her persistence and her refusal to go away, Jesus said, okay, all right, you win. Go. Your request is granted. Your daughter is fine. There was a clear unwillingness a clear determination not to minister to this woman who was not Jewish. Now, if you are still in doubt that the ministry of Jesus was not for Gentiles or non-Jews, listen to this. Jesus did not expect his ministry and did not plan for his ministry to go beyond Israel. He did not expect nor plan for his ministry to go beyond Israel. So the gospel was supposed to be strictly for the Jews. Matthew 10, 23. Matthew 10, verse 23. He was telling his disciples, when you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. Truly, I say to you, you will not finish 
going through the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Did you get that? If you go to this town <clears throat> and they persecute you, go to a different town within Israel. You wouldn't finish going through the towns of Israel before I come back and take you away with me. So, which means the gospel wasn't even, should not even go through Israel in its entirety <clears throat> before Jesus comes again. The second coming, people are still waiting for today, 2,000 years later, he said they wouldn't be able to go around Israel before he returned. That means there's no time <laughs> to go to anywhere else. <clears throat> this gospel cannot reach Europe, can't reach America, can't reach uh, Middle East, Asia, um, can't reach Africa, can't reach Australia <laughs> or New Zealand or Canada. They wouldn't even reach the, uh, the, 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 the town or the towns of Israel before it's over. Matthew 24, 32 to 35. Matthew 24, 32 to 35. Now this was Jesus speaking. He says, Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. <clears throat> as soon as it as soon as its, its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near, right at the door, right at the door. These are the signs of his so-called second coming. He was telling them, these signs I'm giving to you, once you see them, you know the end is very close. I am going to speak about um, the second coming in details later. But now hear this. Truly, I say to you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. This generation, these people in front of me, <laughs> they will still be alive by the time the second coming happens. So in which case, there is no way he was planning for people to build churches and build cathedrals and build temples for him in Africa, in uh, America, in Europe, or any other place for that matter. Not even in Israel was he expecting people to build churches. In fact, no churches were built in his name in Israel because the first followers did not build any churches. They were actually waiting for him to come back and take them away with him. Revelations 1 verse 7 says, look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. Even, the, uh, even those who pierced him, those who killed him, will be alive <laughs> when he came back. How could he be expecting that people will build churches in his name and will be building churches for thousands of years if the end was going to happen at the lifetime of those his peers, the lifetime of the disciples? Right, let's draw some conclusions from this brief discussion. And the first conclusion to draw is 
that establishing churches outside Judea, outside Judah, outside Israel is inconsistent with the teaching and mission Jesus supposedly gave and had, which mission was to save the Jews. That is clear. And of course, the Jews, of course, don't accept him as coming to save them, but that's a different topic for a different day. Second conclusion, establishing churches around the world is inconsistent with the time scale of the second coming of Jesus, which was supposed to be in the lifetime of his disciples, in the lifetime of his mates, in the generation of those living at the time he was alive. That, gener those, that, that generation ended about 2,000 years ago, <laughs> or close to 2,000 years ago. So in that case, there was no need. There was no point to be building churches or taking the gospel to the world to convert people. Number three, and we've seen this point earlier in the previous videos. If you haven't seen that, please look at the links, the videos, the, 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 the first two on, on, in this series. Now, Jesus was, according to the Gospels, a teacher of the law, a Jewish rabbi, who taught people to obey the law of Moses, to follow the ways of the people of uh, Israel, the, the will of the Jews, and to abide by all the rules and traditions Moses had given to them. Jesus did not establish any church, did not instruct anybody to establish any church, did not order anyone to establish any church, did not even advise anyone to establish any church. On the contrary, he told them, I am coming soon. Before you know it, I am back. <laughs> In your lifetime, the lifetime of those people that were there at the time he was supposed to have lived. We will see that the so-called commission to go and preach the gospel to the world was a fabrication. It is not from Jesus himself. It is very clear as well from the gospels. I will come to that in a different video. Therefore, last conclusion, what is masquerading or pretending to be the Church of Christ or the Body of Christ? There's no Christ in them. <laughs> the Body of Christ, the Church of Christ, these are all pagan European religious constructions. Yes, I will repeat. The Church of Christ doesn't exist. There's nobody who follows Christ. I am telling you that and I'm going to prove it. Nobody follows him. Those who are claiming to be of the Church of Christ are simply practicing European pagan religion of different sorts. Roman Catholic Church is a Roman church. <laughs> Anglican church is Anglican ch English church. Church of um, the Presbyterian church is Scottish. Lutheran church, German. Methodist, England. And all the Pentecostal churches that sprang up from all these churches are all simply extensions of this. These churches fundamentally are based on traditions of worship, religion of the people of Europe. Ask ourselves otherwise, why is the headquarters of the Roman Catholic Church in Rome, not in Jerusalem or in Galilee? <laughs> why is the Church of England based in Canterbury? Did Jesus live in Canterbury? The Church of Mormon in USA 
was Jesus in Ota, USA, and so on. Methodist, Lutheran, he was, he was he ever there. So, that tells you that these churches, the so-called Church of Christ, is actually a church of Europe. It's actually a pagan, um, the pagan religion of Europe. And this matter we shall discuss in details in the future. And the figure of Jesus Christ they use is actually a reflection of European Son God. But never mind, we shall get there in due course. <laughs> so it is clear that um, uh, Jesus would not be a Christian because his ministry was not for Gentiles and Christianity. Is a Gentile religion. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up, share the video, and uh, subscribe if you haven't done so. And um, give your comments what you think about our discussion today, and I will respond uh, accordingly. The time for deception is over. The truth must come out. Thank you very much for watching. Until I see you again, goodbye.